OK, good afternoon, everyone. We are on the record. Today is Monday, the 13th day of December in the year 2021. This is a municipal caucus meeting of the Jersey City Municipal Council <laughs> in effort to adhere to social distancing protocols and best practices imposed by the city and state authorities. The city of Jersey City has canceled all public meetings and closed nine essential services as of March 16, 2020 until further notice. As a result, this municipal caucus will be held virtually as a video conference with public access. We had a scheduled 4 p.m. start. The clock on my computer is showing 4.01 p.m. May I have a roll call for the commencement of this caucus? Councilperson Ridley. Here. Councilperson Prinzeri. Here. Councilperson Baggiano. Here. Councilperson Soleil. Not here yet. Okay. Councilperson Solomon. Not here yet. Councilperson Robinson is running a little late. Councilperson. Yusuf's here. Say again. Soleil, Yusuf, Councilman Soleil is here. Hey, Sorry. Councilman Soleil. Okay, I got you. Councilman Soleil is present. Councilperson Navarro. Here. Councilperson Rivera. Here. And Council President Waterman. Here. Okay, we have seven members in attendance at 4.01 p.m. Okay, in accordance with the New Jersey Public Laws of 1975, Chapter 231, the Open Public Meetings Act, also known as the Sunshine Law, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the posting on the bulletin board of the first floor of City Hall. In addition, the agenda of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Tuesday, uh, excuse me, on Friday, December 10th, 2021, at 5 p.m to the Municipal Council, Mayor, Business Administrator, Corporation Council, the local newspapers, and posted on the city's website so I can certify as to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. Council President, would you like me to take it from the top? Yes, please do. Okay. Alrighty, so just so everybody's on the same page, obviously this is the very last meeting of the year very last caucus meeting of the year. So there are no first reading ordinances on this meeting. So we're gonna move right to our second reading ordinances. Uh, and before I do that, Council President, I would just like to remind you that um, in accordance in with the second reading ordinances that we have, we have seven of them. There's also a table ordinance that is going to need the council to untable. We're gonna need a motion to untable the, uh, I'm sorry. If someone, if someone has their um, mic on, if there's any background noise, if you just mute yourself until we get to you, I greatly appreciate it. So as I was saying, um, on the table to gender 11.17 resolution, excuse me, ordinance number 21-074 is a, um, uh, a bond ordinance that needed to be tabled at the last meeting because the local finance, we needed local finance board approval and our bond council is going to be speaking on the first, second reading ordinance anyway. So we are going to touch on that if, if, if you don't mind, council president. No problem. Very good. All right, so I do see um, council person Solomon present. I will mark him present at 4.04 p.m. So we now have eight council members present at 4.04. Okay, the first second reading ordinance is item 4.1 city ordinance 21-076 is an ordinance of the city of Jersey City and the county of Hudson, New Jersey, authorizing the execution and delivery of subsidiary subsidy agreement with the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency to secure the payment of the principal of and interest on up to $18 million bonds and or project notes to be issued by said agency in connection with the implementation of a redevelopment project on certain real property located at 68-74 SIP Avenue and 164-168 SIP Avenue. We have our bond counsel, Jim Furon, here to answer any questions that the council may have. Um, I just wanted to bring up um, where the it was discussed that there might be amendments on this uh, 
I discussed that the resolution that the council had adopted um, with regard to these properties, um, seeking that uh, the RFP, ultimately the, the award should come back to the council before for, for approval, as well as putting in some additional language um, around the, the uh, affordable housing uh, goals and priorities here. Um, so this is Jim Fearon from uh, Glove Wall Rep Law Firm, your bond counsel for the record. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Yes, I did uh, get looped into that um, um, dialogue and there have been a number of discussions. The JCRA, when it um, re discussed this issue with us, pointed out an anxiety, I guess anxiety may be too strong a word, a concern that the that anything that is a condition subsequent that is placed into the contract could be viewed by investors as a by investors in bonds that are secured by the city's payment obligation under the subsidy agreement could be seen as a potential defense against the payment of that subsidy payment by the city, thereby make the bonds less marketable uh, or at least raise questions in the minds of at least a few um investors maybe you know major investors as to whether or not that condition if it were to happen down the road um you know an, an act in violation of an agreement by the jcra could thwart the city's payment obligation um based on that um we have had a dialogue about whether there was something that we could put into the resolution into the ordinance uh, that isn't so much a, a defaultable thing a mandatory thing, but at least a recognition of the council's uh, position on this matter. I think the the, uh, the reluctance in the part of the JCRA, and, and I think they're not unfounded, is that uh, if we say a future sale has to be consented to by the city, um, number one, that flies a little bit against the um, nature of the statute about how authorities are supposed to be independent but also it uh, raises the question of what happens if they don't does the city still have to pay um, and the same could be said uh, as to whether the project is used for something other than affordable housing so while i'm not trying to uh, stonewall you i am trying to communicate what is i think a a decently stated proposition that these sort of conditions in a subsidy agreement could raise a defense. And the way that, as far as I was willing to go based on that, was the insertion perhaps of a recital clause, uh, a whereas clause that uh, expresses um, the intent of the municipal council again, so that people don't have to go, you know, rummaging for that resolution. Um, I think, truth be told, the JCRA prefer not to even have that in the resolution, but in the ordinance, but I think that that's a fair statement. Um, and it could read something like, um, whereas by that resolution, the Municipal Council expressed its support for the purchase of the property, stating that the city's acquisition of the property would be beneficial to the city because it would help expand the city's affordable housing program and maybe some of those woods should be should be coulds but the general idea is to put you know i think we could probably put the thought in the resolute in the ordinance but if we take it further to actually make it into a mandatory provision i think the jcra is believing that when they sell their bonds that that would be a limitation that could spook the market and that's my report back to you councilman right so, so is that um um your your proposal for a whereas statement. Um, I don't know about the rest of the council, but I would be amenable to that if um, others were as well. Um, would that also include? Um, I know you addressed the inclusionary, I'm sorry, the affordable housing um, uh, goal there, but uh, uh, what about the uh, also the intention that uh, the council that um, any bid would come back to the council for final appro for approvals for the council? In that regard. Yeah, and again, I, I think that that that's a matter for the for the uh, administration to uh, take a position on. But again, the JCRA has communicated to me their apprehension that tying their hands in that fashion would be uh, not in the best interest. So I did not incorporate that in what I read to you, Councilman, because of that. Incorporating it as a whereas clause, though, wouldn't be tying their hands just as 
the whereas clause for the affordable housing wouldn't well, tie their hands. Would it? I mean, I, don't I, I was, and, I, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to work with, with, with what I have. Uh, it, a recital that says it is the intention of the city that the JCRA come back and get the city's approval before selling the land. That I think would be read by somebody fairly as a as a requirement, not just as a recital, but as a requirement. I think anything that smacks of a requirement raises the possibility that someone could feel insecure in the city's payment obligation because of a potential breach by the JCRA on the other side of the contract. So the goal, I guess, is to um, uh, minimize the possibility of default by the JCRA not following that rule. Now, if, if this is a bright line that has to be followed, um, there may or may not be a marketing impact as a result of it. And that's the message I was I was given. I see. Can, can you send us, uh, can, can you send at least me the, the language so I can review that um, that you were proposing or that you had drafted or? Yeah, I, I think, I think it would be unfair to call it a proposal. I think it would be fair to say it is a reconciliation of the competing interests in a way that does not sure. um, <laughs> you know, create issues. That's fair, Jim. Yeah, and I will, I, yes, I, I will happily language. send that to you. I'd appreciate it. Sure. Thanks. I have no further. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Jim. My pleasure. I'll stick around just for the other ordinance, though. Okay. Yeah, at, at Council President, if you don't mind, if we can just touch on the um, the ordinance that is on the table agenda, which is 11.17 City Ordinance 21-074, is an ordinance of the City of Jersey City in, in the County of Hudson, New Jersey, authorizing the execution and delivery of the subsidy agreement with the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency to secure the payment of the principal of and interest on up to 169,810,000 bonds and or project notes to be issued by said agency in connection with the implementation of the Bayfront redevelopment project. Um, yes. Jim, would you like to do a little explaining on, on this mm -hmm. one? Yeah, obviously uh, we, we've uh, we've considered this before on first reading. This is the Bayfront project for which we have city bond anticipation notes, and now we're going to be converting them effectively into JCRA um, combination notes and bonds that are backed by the same credit of the city, just expressed in a different formula through the subsidy agreement, agreement instead of through the bond ordinance. The, um, the news um, is that the reason this was placed on the table after the public hearing was because this application as well as the uh, application for SIP Avenue that we just discussed, uh, each of them went before the local finance board at last week's meeting. And there is a rule that you can't finally adopt the ordinance for either of them until after the um, local finance board has um, expressed its uh, its opinion. And uh, in each case, uh, the uh, local finance board passed the approving resolution um, by a 5-0 vote. Um, there were no um, negative comments. Um, there were, you know, as usual, questions that we um, uh, answered, um, and it was uneventful by all accounts. But the reason that, the only reason I'm even discussing this with you, to be honest with you, is that it ordinarily would have been up for adoption last meeting, but we deferred it until the local finance board could act. OK, any questions? OK, Sean. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. OK. Next is item 4.2, City Ordinance 21-077. An ordinance amending and replacing Chapter 187, inclusionary zoning of the the municipal code requiring all applicable developments to include mandatory on-site affordable housing set aside. Questions? I know we dealt with this before. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Uh, Council President, I just like to make some comments for the record. Okay. 
So um, a couple of things. I want to thank uh, planning for um, the responses. Um, I'd ask some questions with regard to kind of viewing the map. <clears throat> um, and if I may um, just share uh, my screen. Um, let me just pull this up. One second, I apologize. Go. Sorry, um, Isaac, do you see the? Um... Councilman, you want to make your statement before you get your um, or is it showing us something to go along with your statement? You are mute, Rolando. So I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. So so okay. this is the um, the tier map. Um, that the ICO references, and, and I just want to point out a couple of things for the record. Um, and I'm going to expand this and make it uh, view it so it, uh, it's larger in view. Oops, where's the? How do I increase the zoom here? Um, oh, there we go. So this is a list of um, all of the census tracts and the, the median income for each census tract and which tier they're falling into. And I want to thank planning for providing this. Um, I, I just want to point out a couple of things. If you um, look at the kind of the downtown area, and I made this point that I think um, while 15% is uh, uh, definitely a market improvement over the 5% mandatory minimum, um, that was uh, previously approved and um, by the council and proposed by the mayor and approved by the council in October of 2020, which was overturned by the courts. Well, this is a, a significant improvement from, from that 5% to 15%. If you look at the um, AMIs here um, and across the downtown neighborhoods in these sections, which I'm kind of circling with my, uh, my cursor, my mouse, um, you can see some of these uh, here. It's ranges from a low, and this is a low of 108,250 as the area median income, um, to a high of $250,000 area median income. Uh, what, what does that mean in that neighborhood? That uh, half the residents fall on one side below 250,000, and the other half fall above 250,000. Right? That's what median uh, refers to. Um, and for each of these census tracts, that's where folks are falling in. Um, you literally have uh, one, two, three, four census tracts over $200,000 as the AMI um, for those neighborhoods. And, and that's not all of them. This is some of the numbers are not in the 70s. Um, if we look at 22, 23, 24, um, which is also in downtown, um, we see area median incomes of 141,000, 189,000, 184,000. <clears> um, so while I think um, folks, I, I think um, people, people of Jersey City would be skeptical, as am I, to the notion that 20% uh, um, is not sustainable on the downtown and the waterfront, um, I think uh, Jersey City should be looking at 20% uh, across the board, but I think definitively in downtown and the waterfront. Um, the second thing I wanted to um, to point out um, is that uh, um, 
if you go to census tract 65, um, I'm going to bring it here. This is census tract 65, which is um, for folks who may be familiar with it. So there's been there was a discussion going back to uh, 2019, um, early 2019. This is the Bates Avenue area. We're literally uh, this is where right now there's 99 Ranch and um, that whole uh, Plaza shopping market and everything in that area um, as well. Center Street, Colgate Street um, over here and whatnot, Brunswick um, going up this way. Um, this whole area is considered in tier, tier one, which is a 10% AMI, right? Back in 2019, we were there was a discussion of 900 units and 50 story buildings going in this area. Um, I would I would argue and I don't know if the um, if the tier map is still to be adopted in January and if uh, planning can elucidate on that um, after I could complete my my comments. Um, that'd be great, but um, I would suggest that uh, the council I won't be on the council in January if we're looking to adopt a tier map that revisits census tract 65 um, in particular um, and then look at similar situations like that census track 65 is just one example. The, the other example, and I'm doing this not for um, political reasons, but it's just a clear um, indicator is census tract number eight, right? Census tract number eight is up in the heights and the AMI in census tract number eight, if you look at that, is 93,462, it's 110% over AMI. Again, census tract number eight. Um, this is where the mayor's home resides and literally he, he just purchased a new home there for $2.4 million. I think Jersey City residents would be skeptical again of the idea that somehow um, the market, the real estate market doesn't make it feasible um, to uh, sustain 20% affordable housing um, or even 15% and in pushing it towards the tier two area. <clears throat> um, and then um, I appreciate the response from um, uh, Director of Planning, uh, Tanya, about um, the tax abatements I'd asked for, and just for the record, I'd asked for, um, while tax abatements in the policy um, are applicable inside of tier tier one, um, raising the uh, on-site affordable housing set aside from 10% to 15%, requiring it if they have a tax abatement, if a development obtains a tax abatement. In tier two, there there is no such requirement, um, as elevating it from 15% to 20%, or even just 17.5% or some other number. Um, and so what was the rationale and in, in, uh, kind of the, 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 the disparate use of the tools there? And it was suggested, it was suggested to me that um, in tier two where there was not gonna be any, the encouragement of any um, uh, tax abatements in these areas in downtown and other parts that are these more upper income neighborhoods and communities that won't be the, um, the uh, recommendation or, or urging of any sort, there won't be any sort of um, efforts to try to uh, uh, urge folks or encourage folks to get tax, encourage the word I'm looking for, encourage applicants or developers to apply for tax abatements in these areas. Um, <clears throat> and um, I, I would again argue that uh, the idea that uh, if uh, tax abatements were utilized, um, that uh, I would encourage them to utilize it if they were utilizing it to encourage them to increase the affordable housing and um, it would make even more much more sense in these more affluent upper income areas where again the income levels are um, exceeding two hundred thousand dollars as the median income there um, it would help to balance out the uh, and continue to diversify those neighborhoods and communities um, and so I would uh, say that um, you know, the decision to leave tier two out of um, by not requiring the tax abatements to be subject to an increase in the affordability um, should be re revisited as well. Uh, so those are my only comments um, and not looking necessarily if, uh, um, if there are any responses to that, that's fine, um, but I don't really have any questions in regard to that and um, I'll yield the rest of my time. All right, thank you. Thank Anyone you. else? Okay, Sean. 
Okay, uh, Councilman Lavar can. Okay, got it. Never mind. Thank you. I, item 4.3, ordinance number 21 078, is an ordinance amending Chapter 3, Administration of Government, Article 11, Department of Public Safety, Sub Article 2, Division of Fire and Emergency Services of the Jersey City Municipal Code to define the scope of activities governed by the various fire prevention permit types and to adjust the inspection fees. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? OK, hearing none, item 4.4 city ordinance 21-079 is an ordinance amending chapter 332 vehicles and traffic article 3 parking standing stopping section 31 parking restrictions for street cleaning purposes and section 31.1 street cleaning review commission of the Jersey City Municipal Code. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? Go ahead, Sean. Okay. Item 4.5, City res City Ordinance 21-080 is an ordinance of the City of Jersey City and the County of Hutchins, State of New Jersey, authorizing the transfer of certain city-owned real property identified on the tax map of the City of Jersey City as Block 21901.01, Lots 1, 4, 6, 8, and 9, and Block 21 excuse me, 21901, lot four to the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? Okay, hearing none, item 4.6, City Ordinance 21-081 is an ordinance authorizing the sale of an easement to the New Jersey Transit Corporation affecting real property owned by the City of Jersey City in block 287 lot 5 in the town of Kearney, New Jersey for the purposes of facilitating New Jersey Transit's portal bridge project. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? Okay, hearing none and the last second reading ordinance item 4.7 city ordinance 21-082 is an ordinance authorizing the city of Jersey City to sell property located at 65 Commercial Street, 20 Commercial Street, and 2 Commercial Street, Jersey City to the Jersey City Municipal Utility Authority. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? Uh -huh. Hi folks, Councilman Lavar here. This is the MUA land sale, right? Uh, 3.7 we're on 4.7 I should say this is 4.7 okay so um look I, I know the administration just um, announced that um, a new plan to ensure that uh Jersey City residents would um, uh, receive their refunds and credits from the uh um for the solid waste collection fee that was charged to their water bills um again um uh Look, I, I, I'm, I know I'm probably the lone voice on this one, but uh, the uh, I think seeing is believing. Um, as of July of this year, there were uh, promises to um, credit and refund uh, uh, Suez and MUA customers um, when they saw these charges on their bill. Um, to this date, they haven't seen it. In fact, for many of those who did not pay it, um, they see on their bill or they say they see on their bill um, a overdue charge, um, which has them alarmed and worried that uh, um, they may see a lien or something else as a result. So my um, recommendation, as I did on November 29th, is to say, which I voted no on this, is that um, we should not um, move forward with this until the MUA makes good on um, kind of resolving the solid waste collection fee. A, a press release is not enough to kind of make good on that, I would argue, and, um, and to uh, ensure that uh, taxpayers um, see their refund um, and their credits uh, applied to their accounts um, going forward. 
The second thing I'll say is that uh, you know, the MUA, um, while there's promises to do this, um, and I read the press release, it, uh, uh, while it says that tax abated buildings will not be um, um, exempted from the new fees, um, it didn't really mention the idea of whether properties or buildings or businesses that um, have private haulers, whether they would be exempt or not. I, I would be surprised if they are, or are they going to sit with the city and the MUA Suez uh, going to force private um, companies and businesses or institutions to uh, utilize the public services and to cancel their contracts with private haulers? Um, and or are they going to be exempted, which uh, um, from this this fee? And um, I think that's a kind of a question to be resolved there still, um, if it hasn't been resolved, and whether the council, other members of the council, were privy to what um, was recently released, and um, whether that's acceptable to you that others be exempted while um, the rest of the homeowners and taxpayers kind of foot the bill um, for those solid waste collection services. Um, so, um, with that being said, um, I'm just going to encourage my colleagues to vote no. Um, there will be no motion to table because it makes no sense to table um, on the last meeting of the year. Um, but um, I would encourage everybody to to vote no and to be able to ensure that uh, the taxpayers of Jersey City are protected and that they will, uh, MUA and Suez will see an urgency in being able to um, refund and process those credits for our Jersey City taxpayers and ratepayers. I yield the rest of my time. Do we know when the um, when Suez is going to refund or credit um, the uh, residents for the amount that they overpaid? Is anyone here from MUA? Uh, well, Barker, could you answer that or get back to us? Yeah, I still I, I still get questions about that from residents, um, you know, and people will continue to ask until it happens. So I, I want to know if there's a uh, a timeline or what a deadline or something, uh, you know, give me something to give to these give to the residents. Understood, Councilman. I don't have that information today, but we'll get it to you as soon as possible. I'll reach out to the BA and the MUA after this meeting. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Just add one more last thing, um, Council President, that, um, which which I said at the November 29th meeting. Again, this is not unprecedented. Um, again, going back to the example of the uh, post office, um, just for the record, again. Uh, when the post office was leasing property from the city, uh, council members um, uh, all had uh, issues with their local post offices and uh, service issues and other things of that nature. And uh, we withheld their lease for their Central Avenue location um, for nearly a year, I believe it was, um, until they met, which they hadn't decided they did not want to do. And, um, um, and ultimately they did come come to the table to meet with us and to actually resolve um, and address uh, many of those issues and concerns. So it's not unprecedented. It's been done before. We've done it as a city council and um, I would urge us to take that uh, step and measure again. Okay, just for the record, I wanted to mark Council Person Robinson present at 4.30 p.m. So we have all nine council members present at 4.30 p.m. If there are no other questions on the second reading, so I'm going to move forward. Uh, we'll have our public request for a hearing. We have 10 speakers at the moment. Petitions and communications. We have items 6.1 through 6.8. Any questions or comments? We do not have any officer communications. We do have report of directors. Items 8.1 through 8.13. Any questions or comments on the report of directors? Okay, hearing none, we have our claims lists and on to our resolutions. Item 10.1, City Resolution 21-822 is a resolution authorizing calendar year 2021 appropriation transfers. 
any person, any council member that has a question, just stop me after I read. So I don't continue to keep reading because it I think it's a little silly to me, for me to keep asking if any questions or comments because we have 64 resolutions on the agenda. Item 10.2 City Resolution 21-823 is a resolution authorizing the insertion of a special item of revenue and appropriations in the calendar year 2021 municipal budget pursuant to NJSA 40A semicolon 4-87. Item 10.3, City Resolution 21-824 is a resolution to cancel tax sale certificate number 2020-1297 sold in error and to refund the purchase funds. Item 10.4, Resolution 21-825 is a resolution authorizing refunds due to overpayments for property tax accounts. Item 10.5, Resolution 21-826 is a resolution authorizing the settlement of tax, excuse me, settlement of assessment appeals filed before the Tax Court of New Jersey on various properties. Item 10.6, Resolution 21-827 is a resolution authorizing a refund of a prepayment with Criterion Urban Renewal Company, LLC. Item 10.7, Resolution 21-828 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City authorizing program contracts under the Community Service Block Grant CSBG for the program year January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. Can I just ask, um, is this uh, any changes in this? Um Funding allocations. So we have Samantha here to answer any questions. Samantha. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, no, this is an um, automatic renewal from our previous al year's allocation. So no changes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Item 10.8, Resolution 21-829 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City authorizing the acceptance and execution of HUD entitlement grants for CDBG, S, excuse me, ESG, HOPWA, and HOME, and authorizing program contracts under the HUD entitlement programs for the program year April 1st, 2021, through March 31st, 2022. Item 10.9, City Resolution 21-830 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City recommending a community development block grant, public and community facilities, fiscal year 2020, unallocated funding to Rising Tide Capital Inc. for Small Business Accelerator Project 311-315 Martin Luther King Drive, Jersey City, New Jersey. Item 10.10, .10, Resolution 21-831 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City, authorizing the execution of a subgrantee agreement with the City of Jersey, excuse me, with the City of Jersey City Department of Administration, Division of Engineering, Traffic and Transportation, which will oversee via transportation for administering city's COVID-19 CARES Act funds for community development block grant public services program under the program year April 1st, 2020 through March 31st, 2022. Is there someone here to speak on this? Yes, Councilman Samantha Carpio, Division of Community Development. Hi, Samantha. So, Samantha, um, I've been discussing this with, um, I'm sure everyone in the Council has, with uh, Carmen and uh, your office um, going back some time now. Um, and I know there was a proposal to do this to um, to allocate CDBG money. Um, given the requirements of the grant CDBG to allocate it to LMI, low moderate income um, families, um, and beneficiaries in that regard. How do you um, 
guarantee that the dollar is being allocated via CDBG money will actually find their way to uh, uh, those LMI beneficiaries. Uh, so this uh, obje national objective for this uh, program is LMA. Um, so the city itself um, falls under 50, uh, is above 51% of that low to mod income. Um, and we are currently in the final stages of the reporting um, and the requirements with VIA um, to kind of finalize the contract uh, when it comes to CDBG and how they would be documenting. So we're currently trying to um, obtain some of the reporting requirements that we are tied to being a HUD entitlement, um, but we are still in kind of that final uh, require or our final stages of requiring VIA to submit um, uh, documentation as far as income goes. But for the national objective, it would just be the area which the city itself falls um, above the 51 percent. There won't be any validation of individual riders incomes in that regard. It's just based on if somebody comes from census tract. I'm making up a number right now three and they're, they're the, the passenger and that the AMI for that area is uh, um, low income, then you're saying that that's the numbers that are essentially being counted. Um, whoever that passenger is or passengers are. Is that accurate? Uh, I would say we're yes, we're doing the national objective that would follow the low medium uh, area, not individual based. Okay. So I, I mean, look, I, I'll just say this for the record for the council and I mean, I've expressed this in the past as well. Is that CDBG dollars are intended to be uh, utilized for the uh, poverty alleviation and uh, addressing the uh, um, the needs of the uh, low income population, low and moderate income populations. Um, you know, th this is kind of the the equivalent of um, um, what um, K KABR did, Jer Jared Kushner's organization, uh, when they applied for some federal funding and um, for their development that is now moving forward uh, at General Square and kind of said that, um, well, Jersey City is low low income and uh, we have all these low income needs and they um, kind of made that argument that uh, um, that uh, these that there's a need for for us to use these um, to to get these sort of federal funds uh, not not in that case CDBG but some other uh, federal program funds or something to that affect uh, tax credits um, because they were uh, uh, because they their project was housed within kind of a low income community um, in Jersey City because they were using kind of the broader Jersey City numbers um, in that regard. Um, I, I, I've brought this up before when we use CDBG money to build parks or um, or to build uh, um, roads or repair roads or sidewalks. Um, there are better uses of our dollars, I think, in that regard, if we really want to, if we're really intent and in, about um, addressing and alleviating poverty. And uh, um, and while VIA, for sure, um, if it is a person who is um, in need of transportation, that that's a useful um, need to address that need and to be able to do that. But if you if we can't ensure that these CDBG dollars are being utilized for that purpose, then I don't know that um, it's the best use for those dollars because for every dollar that you're using for somebody as we see as I pointed out uh, just earlier with the inclusionary zoning we see census tracts changing rapidly um, and uh, uh, a neighborhood or census tract with uh, a median income of uh, 65,000 uh, may have a, a growing number of affluent residents uh, who are all going to take advantage of the VIA service um, and be able to avail of those um, CDBG dollars that are intended for people who, who need them more desperately. Um, that's all I have to say on that subject, and I'll yield the rest of my time.
Councilman, we're, we're just waiting for additional guidance from this particular grant program, which is CDBG's dash COVID-19 CARES Act, and it's got a different set of requirements than the normal CDBG, and we're more than happy to only use these funds to reimburse um, the city's investment for specific residents who fall within that low to moderate income category or specific rides, although we haven't been given all the guidance we need at this point to do that. And so what we've offered to the grant to the grantor is that we would have someone on staff do manual verifications of income level so that these funds would specifically help offset that cost. And so we're, we're just waiting for additional guidance, but I think we're on the same page in terms of what we want these funds to be used for. Um, and, you know, this was one of the eligible activities in providing transportation during the pandemic, which is why we thought this would be a successful application. Uh, but all of your points are well noted and, and we'll, we'll do whatever we can to do additional verifications if it falls within those parameters. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. That means that's important. I, I think that's a good good move. Thank you. Okay, Sean. Okay. Next, we have 10.11 resolution 21-832 is a resolution authorizing the city to sponsor 311 MLK Drive LLC for a mortgage from the New Jersey Economic Development Authority affecting 311-315 Martin Luther King Drive, also known as Block 23101, Lot 32.01, and for the mayor or business administrator to execute the commitment letter on behalf of the city as a sponsor for said mortgage. Item 10.11, resolution 21-833 is a resolution supporting an application to acceptance of award from the NJDCA Neighborhood Preservation Program. Item 10.13, resolution 21-834 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City's Office of Cultural Affairs to accept the Cooperative Marketing Program 2022 Grant Award from the New Jersey Division of Travel and Tourism. Item 10.14, Resolution 21-835 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City's Office of Cultural Affairs to accept New Jersey Council for the Humanities COVID-19 Response Grant. Item 10.15, Resolution 21-836 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City authorizing the execution of a subgrantee agreement with New Jersey, with Jersey City Housing Authority for administering the city's United States Department of Treasury Energy Rental Assistance Program funds under the grant period of January 7th, 2021 to September 30th, 2022. Item 10.16, resolution. Can we um, go back to that one? Are uh, we going back to 10.15? Yes. Okay. Could um, can we get a report, um, uh, a written report of uh, kind of where the, uh, the disbursements are with the, the first round of funding and then um, where that all stands today? Uh, yes, sir. We could get Samantha Carpio, Division of Community Development. We will have that to you for tomorrow and uh, we'll send it to um, to Desiree uh, to disperse. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, item 10.16, resolution 21-837 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City to enter into an indemnification agreement permitting the city to stockpile rock salt on the New Jersey Turnpike Authority, Newark Bay, Hudson County extension at milestone N6.8 during the winter months and authorizing the city risk manager to issue a certificate of insurance to the New Jersey Turnpike Authority. Item 10.17, resolution 21-838 is a resolution awarding a contract to Software House International for the annual support of the Spattle 
data logic or SDL software license under state contract with the Department of Administration Division of Information Technology. Item 10.18, resolution 21-839 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Lime Computer Systems for the RAV 911 and Smart 911 annual license for the emergency mass notification system under the GSA contract for the Department of Public Safety Division of Office, Division of Office of Emergency Management funded by the Fiscal Year 2018 Urban Area Homeland Security Initiative Grant. Item 10.19. Sorry, if I could just uh, comment, um, just uh, note that, that that contract uh, effective date is June 1st, 2021, and the preceding contract before that has an effective date of March 1st, 2021. Just want to put that on the record. Okay. Item 10.19, resolution 21-840, resolution authorizing the award of a contract to AAA emergency supply for the purchase and delivery of various hoses and couplings for the Department of Public Safety Division of Fire. Item 10.20, resolution 21-841 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Altec Industries, Inc. for the purchase and delivery of new articulating telescope aerial bucket truck through Sourcewell Purchasing Cooperative for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive. Item 10.21, resolution 21-842 is a resolution authorizing an award of a contract to Bayer Bros GMC Corp for the purchase and delivery of various 2020 GNC Cannon pickup trucks through the Educational Ser Services Com Commission of New Jersey for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. Item 10.22, resolution 21-843 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Cliffside Body Corp for the purchase and installation of LED light bar and salt spreader through the Educational Services Commission of New Jersey, formerly Middlesex Regional Educational Services Commission for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive. Item 10.23, resolution 21-844, the resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Cliffside Body Corp for the purchase and delivery of a 2022 Ford F550 vehicle through the Educational Services Commission of New Jersey, formerly Middlesex Regional Educational Services Commission for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive. Item 10.24, resolution 21-845 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Fire and Safety Services, LTD, for the repair and maintenance of heavy duty fire apparatus through the Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchasing Program for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. Item 10.25, resolution 21 day. Excuse me. Sorry that my phone went off. Okay. Uh, Okay, item 10.25, resolution 21-846, resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Foley Inc. for the purchase and delivery of various lift vehicles through the Source Well Purchasing Cooperative for the Department of Public Works and Vision of Automotive. Item 10.26, resolution 21-847 is a resolution authorizing an award and we'll have to fix that on the agenda. Award of a contract to HERC Rentals Inc. for the purchase and delivery of a 600 AJ4 WD diesel articulating boom lift through Omnia Partners Coop for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. Item 10.27, resolution 21-848 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Logan Towing Inc. for the light, medium, heavy duty truck towing services of the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. 
Item 10.28, Resolution 21-849 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to modern handling equipment for the purchase and delivery of Hyundai 25L-7A forklift through Sourcewell Purchasing Cooperative for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive. Item 10.29, Resolution 21-850 is a resolution authorizing the award of a con contract with modern handling equipment for the purchase and delivery of a Hyundai 50L-9 forklift through Sourcewell Purchasing Cooperative for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive. Item 10.30, Resolution 21-851 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Northeast Auto and Truck Parts LLC for various Automotive parts for heavy duty vehicles under state contract with Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. Item 10.31, Resolution 21-852 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Van Dyne Motors Inc. for the purchase, deliver, delivery, and installation of Defender snow plows under New Jersey state contract for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. Item 10.32, Resolution 21-853, Resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Vermeer North Atlantic for the purchase and delivery of a new stump cutter and brush chipper through the Sourcewell Pur Purchasing Cooperative for the Department of Public Works Division of Automotive Maintenance. Item 10.33, Resolution 21-854, is a resolution ratifying the emergency contract award to BMS CAT for mold remediation at Joseph Connor Senior Center, 28 Patterson Street for the Department of Public Works Division of Building and Street Maintenance. Item 10.34, resolution 21-855 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract with Amber Air Inc to provide HVAC and boiler maintenance citywide for the Department of Public Works Division of Building and Street Maintenance. Can I get I, the, um, <clears throat> sorry, if um, someone's here on this, on this contract, just get the, um, the amount spent in this and, uh, and a copy of last year's resolution. So I believe we have, um, uh, Danny is on and we do have Martin is on as well from DPW. Gentlemen. Good afternoon, guys. I will definitely uh, provide information by tomorrow. Great. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Danny. Anytime. Any questions or comments? Others? Okay. Item 10.35, resolution 21-856 is a resolution authorizing the award of an open-end contract to Lombardi door sales and service for the repair and maintenance of the motorized overhead doors for the Department of Public Works, Division of Building, Buildings and Street Maintenance. Oh, can I get the same for this? Uh, Danny. You are on mute, Danny. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sure, I'll be able to provide that information also. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks again. And it's on. Okay, item 10.36, resolution 21-857 is a resolution amending a contract with Celco Partnership Horizon Wireless under state contract for the Department of Public Safety Communications and Technology Center. Item 10.37, Resolution 21-858 is a resolution authorizing the amendment of certain schedules in the contract with Schneider Electric Buildings, America Inc. that assures performance of energy of the energy savings plan. Item, item 10.38, Resolution 21-859 is a resolution ratifying the award of a contract to Hunter Research Inc. for professional consulting services for the historic preservation review of demolition and determination of significance applications. Item 10.39, resolution 21-860 is a resolution in support of Senate Bill 692 and Assembly Bill 3388 requesting school districts provide menstrual products in public schools, middle and high schools 
with state incurring costs. Okay. Sean, just for point of record, the um, on our agenda, it has the old title. So if you could just change that, that would be great. It has been updated. I did send a new agenda right before the meeting started. Um, I do apologize that it went out that way, but I did notice that over the weekend and I did fix it uh, today. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Right, item 10.40, resolution 21-861, a memorandum of understanding between the City of Jersey City and the Jersey City Economic Development Corporation designating the Jersey City Economic Development Corporation as Jersey City's Urban Enterprise Zone Development Corporation. Item 10.41, resolution 21-862 is a resolution awarding a contract to Earthly Greens LLC for the consulting and professional services as the community equity engagement consultant for the division of city planning. Item 10.42, resolution 21-863 is a resolution authorizing the payment of a claim submitted by P&A Administrative Services Inc for providing third party administrative services for the Department of Human Resources employee benefits. Item 10.43, resolution 21-864 is the resolution of the Municipal Council in support of the Medicare for All Act of 2021. James, you want to say something? Kick this one off. That's what's on. Sorry, it's the meeting there. Um, yeah, this is a, a resolution uh, that Councilman Lavaro, uh, Councilman Prinzeri, uh, Councilman Soleil, Council President Waterman, Councilman Rivera have all been uh, working with uh, some supporters on, uh, calling on Congress to pass Medicare for all, uh, which would be a really, really important step for our nation in providing uh, just accessible, affordable, uh, health care and removing people from the sort of the ravages of the private market. Um, and I know we have a guest speaker today, but I know Councilman Lavar, if you wanted to add something as well. Uh, no, um, I just think uh, in this time of crisis and COVID, uh, I think uh, the push for Medicare for all is uh, going to be more, more important. Um, as we've seen, even with all the vaccinations and everything else, um, we are far from out of the woods. Um, we may be living with this for a long time, and so um, we should be thinking long term on this. Um, I'm going to, and I'll, I'll also just add that uh, um, COVID and this pandemic has affected uh, low income minority communities more adversely than um, any other population, and Medicare for All um, will help, um, will bridge that gap to ensuring that uh, there's equity in uh, health care for uh, minorities and low income populations. And with that, um, we have our guest, uh, Dr. Lloyd Alterman, um, uh, who's here to speak on uh, behalf of uh, the resolution. Yes, th thank you, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Um, good evening. Um, happy holidays. Um, thank you for asking me to speak about this subject, which is very close to my heart. I am a retired physician who has been in practice for over 35 years in New Jersey. Um, the United States is the only developed nation in the world that does not have some form of national health insurance. And I think it's long past time to uncouple health insurance from employment status. And I think the COVID-19 pandemic, as you've already mentioned, has borne this out in spades. Um, you know, Medicare for all is not socialized medicine. It's gotten a bad rap and, and there are many talking points against it, but they can easily be refuted. Um, Medicare is not inefficient. In fact, it pays over 95% of a healthcare dollar in benefits as opposed to commercial carriers, which pay far less than that because there are fewer middlemen involved in, in administering uh, Medicare. Uh, Medicare for all would work just as Medicare works today, only instead of just covering those over 65, we would be covering everyone. Um, which will include the 20 million uninsured Americans um, and the millions more underinsured Americans who have health insurance in name only, 
uh, when they try to use it, they find their copays and deductibles are so high that it effectively means they are not insured. Um, we can afford Medicare for all in this country. We, what we need is the political will for it. As you've mentioned, uh, Jersey City has many working poor. They would surely benefit from such a program, and I would strongly urge the council to uh, support the resolution. And I thank you. I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Okay, any questions? Okay, Sean, thank you, doctor. Thank, thank you. you, doctor. Okay, item 10.44, resolution 21-865 is resolution recognizing and honoring Mr. Raymond Martin for representing the United States of America and the city of Jersey City for a third time at the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics. I'll just say something here very briefly. Uh, th this happened this past summer. Um, Raymond Martin, Jersey City resident, um, uh, multiple gold medal winner in three different Olympics um, in the Paralympics um, in the, this year, 2021. I should say it's, it's a 2020 Olympics, but it's a 2020, 2020 Paralympics, but it's, it was held in 2021. Um, and um, he's an extraordinary athlete and uh, um, meant to do this a lot sooner. And I'm just kind of uh, you know, cleaning things up and making sure I take care of what I should have taken care of as I uh, close out my final days here. So I'll ask for your support and consideration in supporting um, this young man whose father was a, is now a retired MUA worker and his mother a nurse. Um, and, uh, and it's really a pride of Georgia City. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Lavaro, does the title need to be corrected to 2021 or is 2020 correct? Uh, it's 2020 because uh, they still refer to it as the 2020 Paralympics, I think, and um, even though it was held in 2021. Right? So, okay. okay. Yeah. Just wanted to double check. That's it. Yeah. Okay, item 10.45, resolution 21 866 is a resolution protecting Jersey City human rights defenders of the Philippines and endorsing the Philippine Human Rights Act. So council members, uh, this is a resolution I put forward. Um, this is a uh, resolution that was brought to me by um, uh, um, organizers here in Jersey City, uh, Filipino Americans, uh, young adults, um, who educated me on some of the latest um, developments in, in the Philippines. Um, typically, um, I, I don't really weigh in on, and, and like many of you, don't weigh in on international issues, right? Um, and um, but uh, they brought to my attention a number of things, and um, first of all, which it's written into the resolution and is part of the attachments, is uh, um, that uh, there's been a history of uh, human rights violations that are well documented um, by international organizations um, like Amnesty International and others. Um, about the human rights violations in the Philippines. Uh, while that happens throughout the world, um, what happened in the Philippines is that uh, there's been a number of instances as well of uh, American citizens um, who are expressing their uh, voices about these uh, atrocities and, and um, violations, these human rights violations in the Philippines and how they've been uh, either jailed or um, or attacked, um, beaten um, by the Philippine police and military. And so um, uh, the speakers who will speak to you today will speak to you a little bit about um, some of that and what's going on there, um, something called the anti-terror law that allows for the um, extension of the uh, Philippine government to be able to um, target uh, uh, dissident voices, activist voices um, across the globe. Um, and while we may not think that there is a, uh, that they could be targeted here in the United States, um, that uh, the record shows otherwise, that there are um, very noticeable um, examples of uh, Filipino Americans who have been, uh, who have been uh, attacked and um, jailed for um, expressing their their voices on these human rights issues. 
Um, with that being said, I'm going to introduce two of the speakers. Um, Kate Molina um, is the, will be the first speaker, um, and the second one is um, Jessamine uh, Bonafé. Um, I'm going to read Kate Molina's um, bio first, and then uh, read Jessamine's right after that. Uh, Kate is uh, born in Manila, Philippines, and a long-term resident of Jersey City for over 25 years. She's an artist, educator, and organizer. Um, she received her BFA from Matt Mason Grow at Arts from Rutgers University. Um, and MA, Master of Arts in Critical Theory and the Arts at the School of Visual Arts. She's a member of Gabriella, New Jersey, which is a women and LGBTQIA organization supporting working class Filipinos locally and internationally. Uh, Kate Molina recently collaborated with New Jersey for Philippine Human Rights Act and the International Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines, Malaya Movement, Anakbaya, New Jersey, and Immigrante, New Jersey, on a cultural event, uh, Liwaiwai, Balik Tanau, sponsored by Monira Foundation, was held at the Mana Contemporary, centering on the creative, visual, and verbal expressions of liberation within solidarity work and human rights um, to raise uh, awareness and consciousness of, uh, again, those uh, issues in the Philippines. Uh, Jessa uh, Bonafé was born in Sea Caucus and has been raised in Jersey City. Her West Side roots uh, have taught her all about the community from St. Al's to the Filipino business along the avenue. She's currently part of Anakbaya in North Jersey, a grassroots organization arousing, organizing, and mobilizing youth and students around issues that affect Filipinos in the U.S. and the Philippines. Anakbaya in North Jersey is part of a coalition called New Jersey for the Philippine Human Rights Act that strives to educate the community on the situation in the Philippines and pass the Philippine Human Rights Act. Um, I'll turn it over to Kate and she'll be followed by Jessa. Thank you, Rolando and Council President for having us here and for the introduction. Um, I'm here to advocate for the resolution to protect human rights defenders and endorse the Philippine Human Rights Act. Um, as Jersey City is a sanctuary city, as stated in the Fair and Welcoming Act of 2017, we are asking to reaffirm the city's commitment to its humanitarian efforts by guarding um, our local residents from the extraterritorial provisions of the anti-terror law that was passed in the Philippines in 2020 um, last year. The vague rhetoric of this law identifies forms of expressions as acts of terrorism, such as um, activist art. Uh, for example, um, as a member of the New Jersey for Philippine Human Rights Act Coalition, I helped organize this local event at Mana Contemporary that um, expressed uh, the Jersey City's diversity during the uh, Filipino American Heritage Month. In the first picture on the left, we have Guyanese American, Filipino American, and Mex Mexican American artists who also work along with activist art. And um, an example on the right is the Philippine um, State of the Union Address, a collaborative piece that local organizations worked on to express their um, their views on the Philippine governments that neglect some that neglect the humanitarian efforts of COVID-19 towards its residents. So activist art and outward expressions of human rights violations in the Philippines um, are labeled and or can be labeled as acts of terrorism under these ATL provisions. Um, there has also been local confrontations between politically opposing groups that have attempted to make claims um, of these forms of activist art as acts of terrorism. Although our goal is to de-escalate any confrontations. Um, we hope to protect the political liberties of our community members through this resolution by extending um, and reaffirming Jersey City as a sanctuary city for its diverse communities. The Jersey City resolution would be the first in the East Coast um, to, to vocalize its protections for human rights defenders in the Philippines and endorse the PHRA, which is the Philippine Human Rights Act. So we're hoping um, that we can get your vote to say yes to protect our local residents, artists, activists, and continue to protect the political liberties of our residents and their forms of expression. Um, thank you so much for having me here. I'll pass it to Jessa. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessa, and I'm a, life, a proud lifelong resident of Jersey City. By advocating for this resolution, we are hoping to extend the local provision to the state and legislative level. Uh, we want to ensure that our right to freedom of speech is not considered a terrorist activity under the anti-terror law as, uh, in the Philippines, especially since the Philippine Supreme Court has continued to uphold this law. Its extraterritorial provisions not only put local activists in, in danger, but affects those who speak out across the globe. 
We are not extremist groups. We are simply crying out for all of our human rights to be protected. As a Filipino American, I support the Philippine Human Rights Act. I do not want my tax dollars to fund the killings of fellow Filipinos back in the Philippines. Instead, it should go to uh, education, jobs, affordable housing, pandemic relief, and other social services here. There are so many in our communities, Filipino and non-Filipino, who believe in the same. We should have the right to advocate for this without facing persecution by the Philippine government. This, re this resolution would be the first in the East Coast to be put in place protections for local residents who advocate for human rights in the Philippines. And this protection is imperative now more than ever amidst um, the political turmoil in our home country. So again, we thank you to the council for letting us speak and we are open to any questions you may have. Council members, does anyone have questions? Um, I, I, I should just I should just add um, I, one of the examples that's written into that resolution is of uh, Maria Ressa. Um, if you read the resolution, Maria Ressa is a journalist who's a dual citizen of the Philippines and the United States. Um, and in our reporting, um, she received the Nobel Peace Prize um, in reporting on human rights violations. Right. And, um, and she was arrested and jailed um, in, in the Philippines. Uh, and, uh, and she's a US citizen, to be clear. Uh, similarly, there was a mention there, I think a young man by the name of Brandon Lee from San Francisco. I believe the San Francisco governing bodies there um, also passed uh, similar resolutions in support of, uh, of the Philippine Human Rights Act um, and also condemning the human rights violations there. Um, Brandon Lee was um, a U.S. citizen and in the Philippines um, voicing his concerns about human rights violations and other issues there um, and uh, was brutally beaten um, and is now back home in San Francisco um, recovering uh, very slowly from his, uh, his, his beating. Um, and so ask for your consideration, folks, to consider passing this resolution and sending that message. Uh, this lastly thing I'll say is this past weekend, there was a, what's called a pink caravan. And um, you know, the pink caravan started in Lincoln Park with over 100, um, 100 cars participating in it. Uh, uh, in support of uh, a candidate running um, against the uh, the current uh, incumbent uh, forces, so to speak, um, the without getting into all the politics of the Philippines, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it centers around kind of whether the Philippines will continue on this this uh, pace, uh, this path towards um, um, going regressing backwards towards um, some of the corruption and uh, not towards the corruption and the human rights violations, um, or if it will continue to move forward to be a democracy. Um, and so those folks were expressing their um, concern as well. And uh, and many of the same people who are supporting this resolution were also part of that caravan as well. Mm -hmm. With that, I'll turn it over if there's any questions from anyone. Yeah, I just want to say something. Uh, Ward C has a very active Filipino community. Many are dual citizens and need US protection. I fully support this uh, resolution. Also, I have to, because uh, Pam is standing right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of the best. <laughs> uh, That's true. Anyone else? <laughs> All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate Thank you. your presentation. Thank you. Okay, item 10.46, resolution 21-867 is a resolution recognizing and honoring Senior Frances Salami for her lifetime of service and care for children of Jersey City and for her selfless, selfless courage during the December 2019 attacks. Yeah. Council, I sponsor this resolution for Sister Frances. Um, she's the principal at Sacred Heart um, and was uh, uh, in charge and um, in protecting the students there at Sacred Heart. Uh, for the December 10th shootings in 2019. Um, had wanted to always do this back in the early 2020, uh, around March 2020, and then we got hit with COVID and uh, never came forward with that resolution. So um, again, just uh, presenting this resolution in, in recognition of Sister Frances and what she did for her students and protecting uh, uh, her students at Sacred Heart. 
Item 10.47, Resolution 21-86A, there's a res re resolution recognizing and honoring Raymond Aponte Jr. for his exceptional service as United States Marine and Jersey City Police Officer. Yep, this is a final one for me. Uh, um, I wanted to, uh, again, recognize uh, Ray Aponte. Many of you have seen him come to council meetings. He's now uh, um, retired on disability. Um, from the Jersey City Police Department, served honorably in JCBD, served in the Marines, and was recognized for his exceptional service as a Marine. Ray was a good guy, a very good person. I talked at the police academy. Yep. Rich is right behind me. He's in a caucus meeting. Okay, Pam. I wanted to make sure I reach. I just wanted to chime in on Ray Aponte, too, and let's just not forget he's a three time. Uh, Iraqi war veteran and uh, three times is a lot and uh, you know served on our Jersey City Police Department admirably as well. Let's not forget that. Yes. Very good. Item 10.48 resolution 21-869 is a resolution appointing Jason Beagle to the Jersey City Shade Tree Committee. Item 10.49, Resolution 21-870 is a resolution appointing Glenda M. Sally as a member of the Jersey City Cannabis Control Board. Item 10.50, Resolution 21-871 is a resolution appointing Brittany Bunny as a member of the Jersey City Cannabis Control Board. Item 10.51, Resolution 21-872 is a resolution appointing Jeffrey H. Kapowitz as a member of the Jersey City Cannabis Control Board. Item 10.52, resolution 21-873 is a resolution reappointing Mary Bloom as a member of the Jersey City Ethical Standards Board. Item 10.53, resolution 21-874 is a resolution reappointing Chowdhury Hussein as a member of the Jersey City Ethical Standards Board. Item 10.54, Resolution 21-875 is a resolution appointing Rachel B. Sieg as a member of the Jersey City Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. Item 10.55, Resolution 21-876 876 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to John Dash DA printing company for the printing of blank polythermal PATS PATS tickets for the Department of Municipal Court. Item 10.56, resolution 21 877 is a resolution authorizing the renewal of a contract with Power Plus Translations Inc. for providing interpreters for the Municipal Court. Item 10.57, Resolution 21-878 is a resolution authorizing the settlement of Yvonne Miller versus the City of Jersey City. Docket number HUDL 509218. Uh, a copy of the confidential memo uh, was dropped off to council chambers earlier today. If you've not received that, uh, please let me know. If you have any questions, I can answer them offline. Yeah, I thought we were going to have a closed session on this. I, I haven't seen that one yet. Councilman, I can give you a call uh, tomorrow if you have any questions about it. OK, all right. Item 10.58, Resolution 21-879 is a resolution renewing the award of professional service agreement with the law firm of Braddy Green LLC to represent Joseph Menendez and Mark a. Petroselli in the matter of Vanessa Gross versus the City of Jersey City. Item 10.59, Resolution 21-880 is a resolution renewing the award of professional service agreement with the law firm Chasen, Laparello, Mallon, and Caparuso, Capuzzo, excuse me, PC, to represent police officer Mo Morton Otundo in the matter of Sammy Fagarella versus the City of Jersey City. Item 10.60, Resolution 21 I'm Sorry, I don't mean to be crude or rude, but um, I hope it doesn't come across this way. Uh, but but Officer Atundo is uh, passed, hasn't he? I mean, will this um, 
how is that handled as a, as far as lawsuits go? Uh, you know, just just as a general matter, um, although you know obviously the individual is you know sadly deceased, uh, the obligation still remains um, to defend. To the, the we did some research on this point. The obligation remains to defend um, the estate of this individual. A um, if, in theory, a jury could find that the uh, deceased individual did commit an act, and then the um, any kind of judgment would, again, theoretically go against the estate of that person. So uh, they remain in the litigation um, as the estate. Uh, any kind of defenses that are owed pursuant to any contracts or common law uh, remain um, in effect uh, until the, uh, the conclusion of that litigation. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, item 10.60, resolution 21-881 is a resolution ratifying the award of professional service agreement with the law firm of McManon, Scotland and Forum LLC for the advice and counsel of certain real estate matters. Item 10.61, resolution 21-882 is a resolution renewing a professional service agreement with the law firm of McMahon Scotland and Borum LLC to provide local land use council services for the Sixth Street Embankment Settlement. Item 10.62, resolution 21-883 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Tomahawk Defense LLC for the purchase of CRY, it's C-R-Y-E, Precision Combat Pants Shirts, and knee pads through the New Jersey Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, Bergen County Coop, or the Department of Public Safety Division of Police. Item 10.63, resolution 21-884, is a resolution authorizing a license agreement with Port Authority Trans Hudson Corporation with its office located at One Path Plaza, Jersey City, New Jersey 07306, and the City of Jersey City located at 280 Grove Street, Jersey City, New Jersey 07302 for the beautification of certain columns on Port Authority Trans Hudson Corporation property. And our last time. Go ahead. No. Oh, okay. The last resolution 10.64. Resolution 21-885 is a resolution authorizing the award of a contract environmental system research institute for consulting services and preparing data and deploying ARC GIS urban. Sean, can we just go back to 1061, the uh, Sixth Street Embankment? Uh, Mr. Baker, where do we stand on that? Um, I, I can address that with you as well. I think obviously, you know, just in, in the very the very broad sense, um, there is still the uh, issue of the pending um, decision by the Surface Transportation Board in Washington. That has not been received yet. Um, I don't want to say we are, as far as the settlement or any discussions go, that we are in kind of a standby mode, but we are very much in a standby mode. Uh, as that proceeds. And as the council seen the last, um, over the past few months in the fall, uh, there were some uh, area need study uh, resolutions that were put forth to the council. Uh, if you want to discuss those, I think uh, direct uh, Anissi and I would be very happy to discuss that with you as well. Uh, but as far as the litigation goes with regard to this and any kind of settlement discussions, we are um, in very much a standby position. Because we keep on spending money, spending money, and uh, you know, seems senseless. But I think you know part of this is you know the resolution of the contract at the twelve month point um, as well. So I don't, I can pull this up very quickly. Um, you know, I, I can, I can discuss with you as well. You know, what has been spent uh, down in the last twelve months for this contract. All right. Motion to adjourn. Before, before we do that, I, I appreciate that, Councilperson Rivera. I just wanted to remind the council members uh, on the agenda. I'm going to need a motion from council in a second on 11.17, which is the ordinance that uh, our bond council spoke on, ordinance 21-074. With that being said, we have a motion to adjourn at 5.30 p.m.
by Councilperson Rivera. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilperson Frenzeri. How do you shut this down, Panel? On the motion to adjourn at 5.30 p.m. All council members present by acclamation, please say aye. 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 Thank you so much, council, mem council president, members of the council, all members that showed up to answer any questions. I appreciate your time and effort. Um, and to all the staff behind the scenes, thank you so much for all your support. Without you, this does not happen. And remember, as always, the teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, be safe out there uh, and still be diligent. There's a doctor, I think. Is that Dr. Uh, Bartol? Yeah, I, I, I want to. Yeah, I want to let you know that we have to have a resolution about uh, bespoke health on uh, COVID-19 vaccination. And uh, excuse we, me, I don't. I can't hear. I was informed that there's uh, supposed to be a vaccine uh, resolution for bespoke health. Um, no, I, it was not uh, on this agenda. No, that's what nobody I spoke to me. Yeah. I'm no. trying to get Dr. Bastola, I'll, I'll reach out to you separately. OK, thank you. OK, so with that, have a uh, great night, everyone. Still that end, please. I, I didn't quite follow you. OK, thank you. OK, have a great night, everyone. Thank we you. are adjourned. Oh, Stay okay. safe. OK, good night. Good night. Yeah.